educational WFSU TV. Dad continued working at WFSU FM while still working at WCTV as a weatherman. After all, he could do his TV job mostly before and after a normal work day. As previously indicated, FSU had secured Channel 11 for educational uses, and the time was quickly coming when they should just get on with it. Starting, I believe, in 1959, or perhaps even in 1958, the construction of the station began. The studio was to be located in the graduate school building of FSU. I don't know where the transmitter was. And I remember the very apt slogan which was over the door of the building. The half of knowledge is knowing where to find knowledge. At any rate, after some intensive work for which Dad had been well prepared following his participation in the construction of WCTV, WFSU-TV went on the air sometime on September 20, 1960. This was only five years and five days after WCTV began massaging the airways on September 15, 1955. It had been a turbulent and intensive period of time. Dad was indeed the chief engineer of the TV station, but reported to another on the university staff. It was apparently a relationship that was not destined to last. Nevertheless, the station was on the air, and the studio in many ways was much nicer than the one at WCTV. Dad had learned many lessons from his first experience of building a station. However, he apparently also had the services of Robert Bob Kohler mentioned earlier to help him with some of the technical details. I personally know the initial WFSU TV studios because I worked there one summer in 1961 and was also called on to operate some equipment for a recording session. In fact, I remember that place like it was yesterday. You entered the big doors of the graduate school and then approached the station doors to the right. You eventually, if you had business there, might be allowed to see the very large production studio with the control room looking down from above. This was a much better arrangement than at WCTV. There, the control room was on the same floor, and one didn't always have the required vantage point. And behind the control room of WFSU-TV were several rooms devoted to station upkeep and operations. In one of those rooms, equipment repair could be conducted. And Dad had managed to somehow fund the purchase, at least by 1961, of some reasonable test equipment. I was recruited that summer of 1961. I was just out of high school and hadn't started college yet to build video distribution amplifiers. Even though the station had some at least adequate funding, Dad wanted to make sure the money would go as far as possible. Hence, building these amplifiers and paying me a small salary was a lot cheaper than buying the equipment. I don't know how long those amplifiers were ultimately used at the station. WFSU-TV was planned as a tool to teach students the inner workings of television technology and the medium. Many shows were produced in that studio, and the station, by all accounts, was a complete success. Nevertheless, the TV station did not allow Dad as much program control as he had managed at the FM station. There were many battles, and I think these took their toll. Hence, by the end of 1962, I believe, Dad was no longer at the station. He ended the relationship in a dramatic way, and this is probably why, to this day, I can find little mention of Dad with relation to WFSU-TV on the Internet. I assume that his memory has been completely expunged from the annals of station history. This is just my opinion, and I really don't know for sure. However, WFSU-TV continued, and it is still a useful and viable operation so far as I can tell. Yet I am proud of Dad's part and that of Bob Kohler and others in getting the whole thing started. Bye.